Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with a client makeup tutorial. I'll be showing you guys all of my techniques on how I typically complete a full face. So please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share this video. So to get started, I always start by prepping the skin. My client has combination skin, which means she's oily in the T-zone and dry everywhere else. So I'm going in around the perimeters of her face with this CoverGirl Smoothing Primer because I don't want to dry her out and I want to make sure she stays hydrated in those areas. Then I'm going in with this Becca Matte Primer and I'm just putting it in the T-zone. And as you can see, as I apply it, it's literally taking the shine away and mattifying her skin skin. So once skin prep is completed, I move on to the brows. So for her brows, I'm using the NYX Brow Pencil in Espresso. So starting out with the brow, I always start with the baseline. I then start doing feather like strokes in the same direction that the hair naturally grows in to just make the brow look softer and natural. And then I, of course, I fill in the sparse areas too. And then at the top of the brow, I do the same thing that I did with the base, so creating that line um, because that's going to help determine the shape of the brow, so that's very important too. And I always use the spoolie to help comb the product through the brows and just help the brows look more natural. So don't be afraid to use that. To set her brows, I'm going in with the MAC Pro Longwear Brow Set in Toasted Blonde. I'm working that on the first half of her brow. I'm using this lighter one because she does have the lighter blonde hair going on. Then I'm going to go in with Bold Brunette on the second half of her brow since she has the darker roots and work this into the brow as well to help set it and give it a little bit of color. Next, I start to clean up the brows with concealer. So I'll be using the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Medium Beige. And I always spray my brushes with this Pixi Fixing Mist. It could be anything. It could be the MAC, it could be the CoverGirl, it could be the Pixi, but I always spray my brushes first. That's so important. And the brush that I'm using to clean up her brows is a flat concealer brush by RK Kiss. I think that's what it's called. It's like $3 from the beauty supply store. And to buff out the product, I'm using this crown blending brush. I don't know what material these bristles are. I know it's not gold, I know it's not scroll. It's a different kind of texture, but it blends the product out so beautifully. And the brush is actually really inexpensive too. To clean up the top of her brows, I'm going in with the MAC NC45 Studio Fix Fluid Foundation so that it matches her skin tone and she doesn't have like this lighter color above her brow. 
And that's a tip that's really important to remember because that's a mistake that a lot of makeup artists tend to make because flash photography does not lie. So if your client takes a photo with their phone or even with a professional camera, their concealer, it's still gonna poke through. So it's just best to clean up the top of the brow with the foundation that matches their skin tone rather than a lighter concealer. You're a rolling stone, but I'm a cannonball. You're not fooling me, not fooling anyone. Got your head in a cloud till the legend now. In an ocean now, for this ocean now. Best for sure. I'll be there when you're looking for something. The last thing I do when I'm working on the brows is comb the front of them with the spoolie. This just helps make sure I don't have boxy brows. Now I'm just taking that leftover concealer that's on the back of my hand and applying an additional layer to the eyelid because I don't want any skin peeking through. To set her lids, I'm going to be going in with Color Du Jour No More Shine Translucent Powder. I like to do this first because I find that going in with eyeshadow on top of wet concealer, it makes it a little challenging to blend it out for me, so that's why I like to set it first with the powder. Moving on to the eyeshadow, I'm going in with Soft Brown by MAC and applying this primarily as her transition shade. For her crease, I'm using Rural Eyeshadow by MAC, and I'm actually using the same brush that I used for her transition shade, which is this crown brush. It's their C511 brush. It's called the Pro Blending Fluff. And I just took a quick visit to Crown Brush's website and they're having a 30% off sale. So you can actually get this blending brush right now for like $3.49. It's a steal. For the outer corners and a portion of the crease, I'll be going in with Saddle Eyeshadow by MAC. And yes, I'm still using that same blending brush by Crown, their Pro Blending Fluff. It's amazing. As you can see, it blends like a dream. To cut her crease, I'm going in with Studio Finish Concealer by MAC in the shade NC15. And the brush I'm using is a flat concealer brush by Laura Geller that I picked up from Ulta. It was on sale for like $5.
With this cut crease, I'm only going to be cutting it about halfway across the lid and then I'm going to use my ring finger to like dab the concealer to help blend it out a bit. For her lid color, I decided to use Amber Lights by MAC. And I'm going to be bringing this about a third way across the lid. Next, I'm grabbing my Pro Fusion eyeshadow palette that I picked up from Target. It was like five bucks. I'm gonna go in with this impressive eyeshadow here and I'm gonna put it in the center of the lid. Now, this shade is very, very similar to Amber Lights. It's a smidge darker, but it blends beautifully with Amber Lights, so I really like it. Alright, so grabbing my Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette, I chose to go in with OUD, which is this dark brown here, and I am putting that on the second half of her eyelid. And the brush that I'm using for this shadow is from the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Collection Palette. It's like this double-ended blending brush, so that's what I'm using. I wanted to close out this eye look with a little smokiness, so I'm picking up my Smashbox Full Exposure Palette and taking some of that black there and popping it on the very outer edge of her eye. And the brush that I'm using for this is the Smoky Eye Brush by Clean Color. This brush is literally $1 on their website. Now I'm just going back over with the previous brushes that I used before and tapping over these shadows to help blend them together. Now I'm going in with this really thin liner brush. This is actually a paint brush that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Paint brushes are so similar to makeup brushes, so I always pick up like little paint brushes and use them for my kit. But yeah, I'm just going in to these little corners of her eye that the previous brush was too big to get into. Now I'm going back in with my Pro Fusion eyeshadow palette from Target and taking the shade Relaxed and blending that into the crease and transition area to just help make everything look a bit more smoother and blend it together.
Now I'm going in with my Neutrogena makeup remover wipes. These are the ones that come in the baby blue packet. I think they're like the original ones, but they're my favorite. And I love using these to clean up um, fallout from under the eyes. They're just the best. Now that the eyeshadow is done, I'm going to create her wing and I'm using my black gel liner from MAC in the shade Black Track. And the brush that I'm using for this is the Crown Pro Detail Liner Brush. It's currently like $2.09 on their website with the 30% off that they're having. After wiping away that fallout eyeshadow on her face earlier, it essentially wipes away the primer as well. So I'm going back in with my Becca Mattifying Primer to reapply this in those areas because I don't want to go in with any face products without making sure she has some sort of primer down. And I'm also going over the areas where I'm seeing like a little shine trying to poke through too. So for foundation, I'm going in with the MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation in the shade NC45. I always start in the center first and just work my way out. Now, initially looking at it, it might look like it doesn't completely match her skin tone, but please keep in mind that no one is one flat color. So in this case, my client is lighter in the center of her face and darker like on her forehead and the perimeters of her face. So when color matching her, I decided to color match her chest and her neck and that's how we determined the best shade for her was the NC45. Now of course I'm going to bring lightness back to her face by going in with concealer and more warmth to like the perimeters of her face by adding the contour. So keep that in mind. I know a lot of people struggle with foundation matching because it can be a tr bit tricky for that reason but just keep in mind that you are going to bring back lightness and warmth to the skin with your concealer in your contour. And the brush that I'm using is the number 47 Sephora Pro Foundation Brush and it retails for 30 bucks. Of course, when I'm working on my foundation, I always go in with my trusted beauty blender. This just helps ensure a smooth, streak-free foundation application. And of course, I always pull that foundation down towards the neck as well and blend that into the neck. Um, no one should ever be able to look at your work and see where the foundation starts and stops. It should blend so well into the skin. No one can even tell where it starts or stops. So if you are a pro makeup artist or you're calling yourself a pro makeup artist, you have to be completely unclockable, okay? So I'm grabbing my Kevin Aquan Skin Enhancer in the shade SX10 and just referencing what I said earlier, we are doing this to bring you know the lightness back since she is naturally lighter in the center of her face. And one thing my clients always say about me is that they love how I take my time on them and it doesn't feel like I'm just trying to get them in and out. I really do take my time. It's a lot of things that you can rush in life, but blending 
is not one of them. So take as much time as you need to blend, 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 whether it's the face products or, you know, the eyeshadow, you know, take your time and blend it out and make sure it's as perfect as you can get it. So for her contour, I'm going in with my Sleek Makeup Contour Kit in the shade Dark. And I'm going in with this middle shade here in the last row. And we're going to warm up her skin. To blend out my contour, I always use my e.l.f. Small Stippling Brush. It's $3. I pick it up from Target. And I just love it so much. It's the best thing to me for blending out like cream contour i've used other you know brushes to blend out my contours before but i always find myself coming back to this brush and just naturally gravitating towards it Now once everything is blended, before I start setting with powders, I always have my clients look up and I just blend out one last time under the eyes just to ensure that there's no creasing under there and then I start to set. So um, I always set first with my Color Du Jour No More Shine Translucent Powder. It's just like a thin layer that I put down, let it rest for a few minutes. So once I feel like the powder has set long enough, I'll go in with my Color Du Jour number 20 brush. This is her tapered brush and it retails for $15. I probably have about three of these in my brush collection because I just love it so much. Once that Color Du Jour powder is dusted away, I like to go in with my Banana Powder and Beauty Blender and set those same areas and let it sit for a little bit. For her powder foundation, I'm using the BH Cosmetics Pro Studio Powder in the shade 240. And I'm using my Sephora Pro Brush. Um, it's their number 55 brush. This is definitely my favorite brush to apply powder foundation with because it just makes everyone look so airbrushed. And this brush retails for $34. In the middle of me applying the foundation, I like to go back in and dust away that setting powder that's been baking using the same color du jour number 20 brush. And once that's all dusted away, I go right back to applying that powder foundation. So once the foundation's applied, I like to follow up with bronzer to help set that contour. So I'm going in with my MAC blunt blush and I'm using the crown c522 pro highlight contour brush and this is currently on sale for five dollars and 59 cents with the 30 percent off sale that they're currently having on their website
once the contour is done, I like to go in with the highlight. And so for the highlight, I'm going in with my Missy Lynn Beach Cosmetics palette. I absolutely love this palette because it just gives such a pretty sheen to the skin when doing the highlight. And I'm using my Crown C530 brush to apply this. It's their Pro Detail Powder slash Contour Brush and it's currently on sale for $6.99. And I always go in with my contour brush again just to blend the bronzer and the highlight together so you don't see like this definitive line between the two. And then after I go in with my blush, and in this case I'm going in with my MAC See Me Hear Me blush. This is from their Aquatic Collection so it's no longer sold but it's probably my favorite blush in my entire makeup kit. For mascara, I'm going in with my Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. This is a classic, and of course I'm doing my tried and true wiggle and pull technique. So wiggle at the base for volume, and then pull at the end of the lashes for length. So while the mascara is drying, I go in with my falsies. So I use the duo brush on glue and I'm going in with my Ardell Wispies. Before I actually apply them, I do try them on first just to make sure I like the way they look and of course I measure them. So while my lash dries, I start on the lips to kind of just kill two birds with one stone. And for her lips, I'm going in with my Kiss lip liner in the shade Roasted Coffee. I picked this up from my local beauty supply. Once the liner is applied, I go in with lipstick, so I'm going to be going in with MAC Self Aware first. And this is such a beautiful nude to have in your kit if you are a makeup artist. It's just so beautiful and it works on all skin tones. And if you've been watching my channel long enough, you know I never just do one lipstick. I always mix my lipsticks. So next I will be grabbing my really me MAC lipstick and applying that on top to give it a beautiful, beautiful finish. I just love customizing lip shades for my clients. After I have my clients dab their lips, I always wipe off the excess product off the brush and then I go back in to feather out the product towards the edges of the lips to help blend it in a little bit better with that lip liner. So by the time all of this is done, I know that my lash is done drying. So I go ahead and pop that on. I usually start with the outer corner first and then work my way towards the beginning of the lash. And that's how I choose to stick my lashes on. And I usually squeeze it together just to make sure it's as close to that lash line as possible. And then I go in with my tweezers to separate the lashes too to help them blend better with that falsie. Once lashes are on, I like to finish off the eyes. So I'm going in with my Urban Decay Perversion Eyeliner. I'm lining her lower lash line with this and then I'm gonna smudge it out with my Color Du Jour Number no. 4 brush. This is her pencil brush. This brush retails for six bucks. I'm grabbing a little bit of the Uptown eyeshadow from the Pro Fusion eyeshadow palette and smudging it underneath the lower lash line. I'm also taking a little bit of Saddle eyeshadow by MAC and smudging that underneath the lower lash line as well. To 
to brighten up her tear ducts, I'm going in with my Aaliyah MAC palette and taking some of that light gold and popping it in her inner corners to add a little bit of brightness to this look. To bring a little balance to her lower lash line, I'm going in with some mascara and I'm using that same wiggle and pull technique. And as a finishing touch, I'm going in with my Black Track Gel Liner by MAC over her lash line to cover any glue that's peeking through. And that is it, you guys. This is the completed look. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you care. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!